I haven't seen you for 18 months. For 18 months, yeah. and my life has been poorer for it. I, it's so dark, isn't it? It is. It's dismal when you don't see me. I know. And when I don't see you. Suddenly, there's a light in the studio yeah. for all of us. Thank you for, for being here. We're so, we're so happy to have you in the studio. I didn't know this about you, Patrick, that you have a mantra that you always say before you go on stage in front of an audience, which has been many times in so your did, career. Did you just say it then? Mm. Really? Can you share with us what your mantra is? You're all grown-ups, yeah? <laughs> okay. In a way. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> you wouldn't want to be a real grown-up, would you? God, no. 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 Um, OK, for, uh, for, uh, I'll make this as brief as I can. For many, many years, decades as an actor, I tried to do what the director wanted. And I had success when I did what he wanted and I repeated it night after night after night, you see? And then something happened to me. I had a kind of epiphany and I realized that I was not giving of myself and that the important thing about being on stage is that you are living in the moment. And that moment has never happened before. The audience have never seen you do this before. You've never been in front of these people before. So, uh, when I'm standing waiting to make an entrance, or I do this sometimes when I'm on camera too, when they're about to roll on a very important scene, and I say to myself, out loud, but very, very softly, I don't give a <laughs> It's so great. It's so great. James, it works. Yeah. Because it frees you up. Because for so many years, and even though I was having a quite good career, I, I was limited in what I was doing because I was trying to continually repeat what I thought the director wanted, instead of maybe doing what Patrick wanted. Sure. Know? Well, I love it because you don't give a f Because oh. today's your eighth wedding anniversary and you're here with us. <laughs> <laughs> that's... That's how... But... <laughs> I am not going to spend the night. No. <laughs> but... What, do you have any plans? Is your wife, is she OK with you being here with us? Do you have plans for the rest of the day? She's very, very happy that I am here. <clears throat> I think our plans, because I got up at half past four this morning oh, wow. to, to do a day's work, so I'm not going to be much good as company for the rest of the evening. So it'll be a little later in the week that we celebrate. But um, she is always delighted that I'm here talking with you. But I'm afraid I have to say there is another individual in this room whom she has a history with and whom she loves to meet and see whenever she can. Stand up, please. <laughs> Reginald Lucian yeah, I know. Now, I only learnt last night that you were Lucian. Yes. yes. And that my wife is also a musician, singer, songwriter, and they knew one another 20 years ago in Brooklyn. Yeah. That's right. And the name of your band was Mock... Tube. Tube. Yes. Mock Tube. Yes, Mock yeah. Tube. Yeah. yeah, Mock Tube. Yes. And she adores you. Oh, she's she's wonderful. She really is. Yeah. You, you're very lucky. She's well, maybe you could maybe you could really make the wedding anniversary. You could go round and sing a song, Reg. Yeah, outside. Hey, yeah, yeah. We got Steinway. We bought it only a few months ago. <laughs> it's, it's it's an upright Steinway. Oh, yeah. So you know, you I think you're going to be content with the instrument. Is this okay? Will the band do this whenever you need? We whenever bought... you need them to come and play, will the band do this? Will you be there? There you go. You'll have the whole band. We That's bought... our gift for your wedding anniversary. <laughs> the entire band. I mean, that suit, by the way. Yes, my love. Really beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> oh God! I suddenly feel shabby. Well, that's <laughs> why I wear it. <laughs> <laughs> That's Ladies why I wear such, <laughs> such beautiful suits, just to really make the guests feel inadequate. That's what I try and do. <laughs> now, I want to talk oh to you... Oh, my God, this. is this the James Corden show? <laughs> <laughs> now... I didn't know. <laughs> that's what it is, that's it. Now, Patrick, during... I'm, in, I'm intrigued by this, because during lockdown, you started writing 
which I, I think is going to be a, a brilliant read. You started writing your autobiography. Have you enjoyed the process of looking back on your life and career? James, it's been extraordinary. Um, I'm not a writer. I've occasionally written 200, 300 words for an introduction or something like that. Uh, and I've had invitations to write something fuller, and I've always turned it down, mostly because I was working. I didn't have the time to do sure. that, and I, I'm not a writer. Anyway, my agent called me back, I think, in March and said, look, there's been this offer, this publishing house wants to publish your book, and um, there may be no other time like this one for yeah. giving it over to writing. Right. Uh, I moaned and whined and groaned about it and said, OK, I'll give it a shot. And um, I have so far written 274 pages. Wow. And I, it's 1987. So <laughs> I'm getting okay. closer to you. OK, OK, so that's and, um, going to be quite the read. I, I cannot tell you how good it is for me to do this. My childhood was... Difficult, uh, uncomfortable, fearful at times. And I've written for the very first time in my life as openly as possible about that. And, and why I'm an actor, encounters that I've had, it, it's, it's therapy, James. Yeah. And, uh, and it doesn't cost anything. In fact, it pays it you. Pay you. It pays yeah. you. Imagine that. Imagine that. Well, I can't wait to read it. I think it's going to be absolutely brilliant. I'm, Thank you. I'm certain of it.